Today on the Nerdy Gritty, we're back, and we talk about movie musicals and what makes a good stage-to-screen adaptation. What more world does appear inside it? Just another hopeless addict. Well, it makes a man insane. If the drums don't get you, the guitars will. Oh! Oh, we're free! We made it out! Oh, oh my that gosh. North Korean prison finally let us oh, go! I can't believe it took Woo! so long! Uh, they wanted all of our opinions on video games yeah. for like a month and, and we a half. Were like, we were like, Kim, we've we have a we have a podcast. You should listen Just to listen it. Just listen to it. So anyway, to get out, he's gonna be on next week. So yeah. look forward to that. It's gonna be weird. But uh kinda <laughs> had to. Wait, man, we're gonna get now now we really are gonna be on their radar now. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. If we get some extra views or listens because of it, that's fine. Hey, uh, Kim Jong Un, rate us on iTunes. <laughs> uh, hey, Fox, we have bad news. Not bad news for the podcast. Bad news oh. for me and you. It's yeah. going to be 112 degrees. Yeah, this we were next talking week. about it a little earlier. Oh, by the way, um, uh, welcome to the Nerdy Gritty, where we delve deep in the details of podcasting. I'm Fox. Oh, and I'm Des. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Anyway, about that. that was my responsibility. Yeah, and it I was. You, you, so done, sorry. you done. You done. You done. You're listening okay. to the Nerdy Gritty. There you go. Right. So anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, we're we both. You're from Arizona. I grew up in Arizona. Right. Right down the road from you, without actually knowing. Yeah. About no it. idea. Uh. Anyway, and uh, so we're kind of used to or have a lot of experience with ridiculous temperatures. Yeah, but not 60% humidity, though. <laughs> right. And also, you've talked a lot about, like, missing Arizona and not liking Oregon a whole lot, specifically because of the weather, I think. Yeah. Cool. Good news. <laughs> you, got, you got both. <laughs> You're here. Um, uh, well, so we, we were having a conversation. What are some good games to play in the we, summer months? How do month? we beat that summer heat? Yeah. You know? How you do know? we do that? What do we do during the summer when it's literally 112 degrees when it's normally 90 here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what? First of all, I think this falls into a, this is a big category of games, really. Anything that's snowy. Anything. You got to live vicariously through your games, through your gaming. So I'm thinking, like, you bust out your N64 and get some 1080 snowboarding in there. Oh, that's a good one. I played one. 1080 snowboarding a lot when I had an N64 way back when, and I can still I still shiver a little bit when yeah. I just, you know, you car- know carving up those pipes. Turn and... an AC vent directly on you. Right, right, right. You got to really feel, make it a, four, a 4D experience. Yeah. You can feel the, the temperature. That, course, that fresh powder on yeah. your skin. Have right. somebody crush ice and just like gently. Just throw it at yeah. you a little bit and then like hit you in the head with Overhand, an ice block yeah. when, when, you, when you bail. When you bail. <laughs> really make it a good experience. Then, of course, you got like Skyrim or Lost Planet. No, and, de- curse you. You got Lost that Planet. That was my first one. Is, <laughs> see, I was going to say Lost Planet. Yeah. Lost yeah. Planet is a game where you are in this frozen tundra. It's a but trilogy, also, if I'm not mistaken. There are mechs. And you That's can true. be in a giant mech. Yes. And so to me, it's almost like being in the car with the air conditioning yeah. on. Yeah. You're just piloting a giant machine, <laughs> but it's nice and cold all around you. You, you know, know how just like in real life, you shoot big monsters that have giant glowing weak spots. With your car. With your car. Yeah. It's basically that. It's but it's colder, so it's thing. nice. Yeah. And then you have like Frostpunk. Ooh. That's a different genre, but it's a very cold yeah, experience. Yeah, it's cold, but that one's almost the like, I'm going to die if I don't take care yeah, of this that's how i feel right now <laughs> i'm staving the off the end of my life by br- <laughs> that's true it is the opposite you want the cold here but there you're trying to keep warmth and yeah you, you want okay that yeah, a little heat. different yeah. i guess but still cold Ma- maybe There's if cold. you play frost punk you'll take the heat like you'll appreciate it more as you're playing frost yeah like, there it is that's man it. i'm glad it's hot here because in my <laughs> game people are literally freezing to death <laughs> yeah see you know. okay I- i'm gonna turn gears here a little bit i was thinking play doom What's a better way there it is. to think about the fact that you're in 113 degree heat than that somebody else is literally burning in hell? Yeah, good ju- ju- yeah and then you get to take out your anger on the heat yeah. by blasting away demons. It really puts things in perspective. Yeah, you know? right, right, like, right, right, right. I, 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 yes, I'm in really, really warm heat right now, but also I am not burning in hell. Sure, yeah, it could be worse. Yet, of course. Right. Well, <laughs> depending. Depending. We can't speak for you. Uh, I can't speak for you, I think, Frank. I think we... Yeah, Frank. <laughs> uh, Wii Sports 
I think. Ooh, that's a, a good, good one. one. Just get 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 the, get those get your sports on. You know, get out there and play some sports, but also in the comfort of your air conditioned home. That's a good one. See, and th- that made on the note of sports, I found the perfect one. What I was thinking it? about it, and this is exactly is this the, the one, one that you were trying to remember the name? No, of? No, that was oh. Lost Planet. Oh, yeah. Then we have very different ones for that. No, that's fine. Go ahead. I have the perfect one. Are you ready? Dead or Alive Beach Volleyball. There it is. Yeah. Because you're on the beach, you're playing volleyball, and then you realize how ashamed you are of yourself. Right, right, And you right. choose to turn the screen off and go outside. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, for sure. Or just bring your family and all play together. Yeah, It's like a fun go. bonding time. Turn up the, uh, the your age on there. Right. Because uh, the age is actually a jiggle meter, if you didn't know that. <laughs> and the older you are, oh, the more jiggling volleyball. it is. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Now, nah, here's the perfect summer game. Oh, oh, okay. Let's I don't, hear it. You might. Uh, it's called Bok Tai. The sun is in your hands. Have you ever heard of this? No, man. This, this is, is the one that you had to look up, but okay. This is a, a Konami, uh, a Kojima game. Okay. On the GBA. Okay. On the cartridge, there is a. Uh, fo- uh, have it right here. What's the actual term? A photometric light sensor. In the game, you are fighting vampires. And if you play in the sunlight, you power up Holy your weapons. Holy crap, that is perfect. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, it was a really cool gimmick, but didn't really land super well because not a lot of people were really willing to... Game outside. <laughs> especially on a Game Boy Advance, which did not have a backlit screen. Oh yeah. And it, it's a classic Kojima game where it's like, oh, interesting, but also... Eh. <laughs> like I don't know about this. Uh so I think that's the perfect summertime game. Yeah. The problem is if you go outside right now in a lot of the United States and in the future a lot of the world, your GBA will probably just explode from the heat and send shrapnel <laughs> because it's too hot. Well guys, there you go. Those are your your choices. That's your summer summer gaming schedule. Right, because apparently nothing is releasing this they summer anyway. They don't put games so. out anymore anyway, so <laughs> that's what you got to go with. Hey, Fox, what's going on in the world of news right now? Um, Well, okay. So we were going to talk about like E3. Right. Uh, we were talking like a week ago about when we do another podcast, uh, let's talk about E3. But at this point, it's been a week slash more time. Yeah. And, you know, E3 is covered by a million people. And so what, I think what we'll do right now is just kind of give out some of our highlights. Things yeah. that like stood out to us as interesting or newsworthy or whatever. And I'll start out with Nintendo's uh, Nintendo's e3 presentation which was disappointing because they didn't really talk about a lot of the big games that they've announced in the past right in fact one of the more disappointing points was metroid prime 4 is in the works that was literally yeah, we know, it's we know still that. working yeah and then they were like metroid dread and you're like See, oh. that was probably my highlight of e3 it was metroid one of the big dread ones looks good i've literally never played a metroid Really? Liter- not an actual Metroid game. You and, and I should do a randomizer. We should. That'd be fun. Or, or, or just start from the just play Metro- Metro- Metroid. Let's play the Metroid games. Yeah. But uh, that one looked fun, and it was like, oh, cool. You're actually still giving us something in the Metroid realm. It felt like a little bit of a, hey, sorry, this is taking so long. Right. Here's something that's, you know, pretty anticipated by some people. Like, it w- unexpected, and that was fun. So that was one of the big highlights for me was Metroid Dread. Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. I was also interested to see, and of all things, uh, Halo Infinite's multiplayer. Sure. They showcased that a little bit. And I played a lot of Halo 2 multiplayer mm-hmm. back in the that day. Was a, that was a beloved Th- That's pretty much what like, really took that off with the, the multiplayer. That was the big one, yeah. Yeah. And th- it really gave me those callbacks. Like, of Oddly enough, I've played like all of the Halo games. You wouldn't know it, but... I, I- played the original trilogy, the the... the- the stories my my roommate had them and oh yeah i just consumed video games like nothing else sure. back in college and right so yeah nothing uh, else other than the on. first one i didn't play the first one that's not true <laughs> oh two, that one xbox 360 onward i i've, I've played pretty gotcha. much everything gotcha. and uh like even like odst and uh oh, okay. yeah some of the side Re- ones reach and whatnot. yeah uh but it was really cool to see like that classic halo multiplayer come back in a way like that it it was generally exciting I, i'm not gonna lie i think if i had to give a tag to win i would give it to microsoft Bethesda. I'm, I'm even more than ever considering doing one of the like the monthly yeah. subscriptions to an xbox you yes. know where you could pay 15 bucks a month and get the i agree because there, there was a lot of cool stuff uh particularly starfield man all they showed was a uh uh you know a a trailer not, not a gameplay trailer a uh like a cinematic trailer right. um 
But the big news with that is that Starfield, one of the most highly anticipated games uh, of gaming right now, of the industry, is going to be an Xbox exclusive. Yep. And it's not shocking. They have said, hey, we're going to have exclusives with Xbox because they own us now. Right. And it wasn't shocking. And I actually think it made the most sense out of all the it big really upcoming does. games. It really yes. Because... The next Elder Scrolls, the you know, whatever the next Fallout is, like, those are ongoing series that, you know, since we've been used to them being on multiple platforms, they probably should continue to be. Starfield's new. It's just a new, a new IP that's going to be on Xbox. And as a PlayStation owner, although I want every game to be available to everybody all the time, I can't complain much because I have played a lot of PlayStation exclusives and they're really fun. And... Sure. Let, it, right. You know, it, the scoreboard now has one Microsoft on there. Yeah. It's <laughs> Microsoft is there. Versus PlayStation. <laughs> and I can't really complain too much. Yeah, I, I wholeheartedly agree. Well, that's all the news I got because we got a lot of stuff. We do. That we've been doing. We've been all, we've been not doing this for like two months now. Yeah, work, at least. Our work schedule hit right during our recording times for a while. Changed very dramatically. So uh, we got a lot of stuff built up in the old in the old. So stuff meter, you, you know, this will be our, our pre we're going to talk about this again, but know that if you're just listening to this normally, you're going to hear an edited version of all the stuff we've been up to all yes. these good, good things. But if you come over to our Patreon and you become uh, a patron of ours, you get the director's cut. There will be a lot more. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. I'm yeah. going to start. Yeah, please. Are you ready? Because uh, there's been a lot of like times where Jackie and I, my wife and I are just like, we just need to chill. We just need to veg. You guys, been a you guys moved recently yeah, and you so, got a lot going on. Uh, I watched uh, several Netflix shows. I'm going to talk about the two bad ones. Cool. Three bad ones. Sorry. Three bad well, you ones. You said Netflix shows. You don't have to be redundant. Oh no, because I, I'm going to bring up some real good ones. After right. This. Yeah. Netflix has plenty of good. Anyway, uh, Jupiter's legacy, hmm. the irregulars and cursed. So Jupiter's legacy is a, uh, is a comic series comic series and it essentially is the premise of it's very similar to kingdom come actually oh really where it's there's the old guard of superheroes okay and their like uh their thought way of doing things is just kind of going out of In style the past, then yeah. there's the younger crowd and one of them killed a bad guy Okay. It sounds and, like, uh, uh, I think it's a Mark Miller uh, comic. Mark oh, maybe. Millar, yeah, who did like Civil War and mm. a lot of big stuff. That sounds literally like he read Kingdom Come and yes. said, I'm going to do my own version. Yes. Uh, it's not great. Oh, the, acting, the movie or the show. The show is not great. The acting is really poor. The choreography is just even worse. The costumes are very campy and it look looks very a little goo. I've seen a lot, plenty of stills from the show, and it kind of looks goofy, like a joke. They have some pretty cool like thoughts and ideas yeah. in there, but for the most part, it's it just was not great, and it got canceled after season one. I saw I saw that too. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Netflix cancels a lot of stuff, but that one seemed like an understandable one. Yeah, and on top of that, the Irregulars was a steampunk sort of sci-fi right, right. Sherlock Holmes. And so is, this is the one that uh what's his name was involved with before he was taken off, right? Or am I th No, I'm thinking of the HBO one with Joss Whedon. Never mind. Oh yeah, that's The Nevers. Yeah. I've also been watching The Nevers sure. and uh I it I will say this, it was good. I've talked about it before. Sure. So I'll, I'll go Let's to Let's talk it, about The Irregulars. It was good. The Irregulars was one that was actually pretty interesting. It was it's supposed to be like very YA. It's a group of teenagers that uh that watson pretty much hires to be his eyes on the street oh okay and it's the way that they help solve the crimes and whatnot okay. but sherlock's kind of mia through all of this and they go into a lot of things like how watson is actually gay and is in love with sherlock and that's why he's been putting up with oh, him all these right. years okay. and for some reason i was thinking of uh mycroft <laughs> i was no, like wait a minute <laughs> that's not right whoa that's different <laughs> Uh, and then that uh, Sherlock has illegitimate children and, you know, just things oh. like that. And they go into a lot of things, which some pretty interesting ones. If they hadn't leaned so much on it being YA, there was very much of a boys, ooh, boys oh, really? type thought process to it. Okay. Yeah. And also just some ridiculousness to it. But it wasn't bad, actually. Hmm. And so I'm sad to see it go. I'm not surprised. It got canceled also? Yeah, it also got canceled. Okay. Uh, and then for the one that I don't think got canceled, Cursed is 
the story of the Lady of the Lake, how she became the Lady of the Lake oh, okay. in the Arthurian legends. Sure. And it's very, very high fantasy, very bland though. Like wow. it's really predictable. In fact, we watched about six episodes of it and decided not to finish it. You didn't even it. finish it. Okay. Yeah. So those are the, those are the bad shows I've been watching. Go ahead. Uh, I don't really watch a lot of shows. Yep. Um, but you know, what? I'm gonna start with games I've been playing recently. Yep. Uh, uh, we'll start with Returnal, one that I don't think we ever got to talk about because yeah. it came out after. So Returnal is a PlayStation Five exclusive. It is a roguelike in which you play uh Celine, a woman who is Dion. Who is, yes, yes, is a licensed Celine Dion game, <laughs> uh, straight out of the '90s. Um, and every time you die, you say, my heart will go on. My heart and you can, will yeah. go on. No, uh, you play Celine, who is an astronaut who lands on a, crash lands on an alien planet. And to put it, there's a lot of story going on here, a lot of depth to it. But basically, you are figuring out what happened on this planet, as well as there's a lot of personal history that goes into this. And I enjoyed the gameplay. It was essentially in like the combat, kind of a bullet hell shoot 'em up, mm. but in first person, not first person, third person. Yeah, which was interesting, like third person mm. shooter style shoot 'em up. I don't think I've ever played that. Like a bullet hell, usually right. those are a top down kind of thing because it gives you a much better. View. I guess more. I guess the most similar you would get is like near automata, which was yeah. a third person shooter bullet hell. This one I liked more than near automata. The story I th- I liked a little. It was a little more straightforward with still a lot of like. It was it was a cool story in which there's a lot of I've after getting to a certain point and being like okay that's enough that's when I stopped recording uh, and putting on our channel I watched a few like story explanations mm. and I watched like three and they all had a different take but all three of them were like oh yeah okay I can see that which is cool that's awesome I really yeah. like that where it's that's like really okay cool. cause there was a lot of symbolism and it was good in the sense that the story was interesting and kept me like i want to know what happens what happened what does this mean but also the gameplay is super fun hmm. and the boss fights are some of my favorite parts there is a boss called uh, hyperion which is this like there's a lot of cthulhu esque tentacle looking like uh imagery in it and he's like this organ like this big like organist like playing this massive pipe organ oh like I, okay, when you said organ i was thinking like no body not like a, no 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 he's like this big like tentacled guy playing this massive pipe it's organ. very uh davy jones it's ve- yes but much more sinister yeah uh this there's a the song uh don't fear the reaper is actually very like core to part of the story and throughout <laughs> the part of the game that you are playing like this 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 realm that you go through this biome that he's the boss of you're hearing a dark or like or organ uh cover of don't fear the reaper and that <laughs> sounds goofy but it's so cool like it just sounds so cool i love it there's no there's I no hear the it. lyrics aren't in it it's just like the the da, 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 but like come. slowed down and it's very like cthulhu-esque where it's much yeah. like it's bo- under the surface Eldritch. yes yes that's a good term so it was a very fun game uh, uh and very difficult at times um and uh really really great that's awesome the other game i'm playing right now is ratchet and clank rift apart mm-hmm. which if you've played a ratchet and clank game it's that which is a good thing yeah it doesn't really innovate in the gameplay it really is a game that shows off the capabilities of the PlayStation 5. I'm told there's no load. There basically. are literally no load times. That's literally, it bonkers. will load entirely different, like, not just, like, backgrounds, but, like, entirely different uh, levels, you know. Instantly? In, literally instantly. That's in the so fact, cool. Like, you are fighting 40 different enemies, including a big boss, and... At a certain point, it'll say, or the boss will just say, "Okay, we're going here." Essentially, and it'll take you to an entirely different environment. And there's and there's still like forty different enemies and a million particle effects, and there is no hiccup at all. And it looks wonderful, and it is a technological, you know, achievement, and it is a fun like story. And I love these characters, but it's Ratchet and Clank, yeah, you know, like which is a good thing, yeah. But if you're looking for like a new kind of storytelling method or whatever, you're not going to get that. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's really fun. I'm playing it on old, like the highest difficulty because Ratchet and Clank historically is not about yeah. difficulty. And I was like, well, you know, let's try it. And I died a few times, but overall, it's 
not the most complicated and that sounds like a great time though it so is it a like fun a game fun. to play yeah. fun is the perfect word for it nice all right into the good shows that i watched okay uh which i'll have more to say i watched a new netflix anime called yasuke ah so have i really i watched the first four episodes out oh of six. okay i, I, won't, I won't go too far in okay yasuke is great it's fun it, it's oh man it's so cool i love the premise of it so the whole premise of it is that within all the trading going on in the world a slave owner came to japan feudal japan yes and the japanese thought this dark-skinned man was super cool purchased the slave or this is historically accurate there is an actual man named yasuke from history really this i is have a real no thing. idea it's a story about a real person but yes. it is a very classic anime premise of the celebrated samurai who was now retired has to be has a dark into past. the game yeah, yeah. But what I love about Yasuke the most is its fantasy is so diverse. <laughs> yes, there's yes. there's a mech robot. There's yeah. a were bear. There's like Classic, so many you know evil magician. Yeah, there's so many cool things going on here, like a, a tribal magician type yeah, thing. Yeah, and but it all fits in this world just fine. And then and then evil priest. Yeah, yeah, evil priest, absolutely. And it all fits in this world just fine, and it seems so natural. Sure. And I, I won't give it any way, but as it progresses, loyalties change and people course, change, yeah. and it's just way fun, man. I really, really enjoyed Yasuke. Yeah, the uh, my problem with it so far is that there's not a lot known about this person from history. And to me, the story is pretty generic. It's not a bad show at all. Right. The story just doesn't have a lot of depth to it to me. Man. It is that like retired man protecting somebody pulled back into the game reluctantly. Kind what I, of, that so trope. I'll go into something else that I watched then that is very, very good, but I also have some issues with is um, the underground. Okay. It's an Amazon prime show and it's a fictional show about the underground railroad and slavery. Okay. And it takes, uh, it comes from the perspective of two slaves who are trying to escape on the underground railroad. All right. And they bring in such good drama and such intense moments like of the truth of slavery, like really, really different. They talk about like the breeding of the slaves, Yeah, you know, like, Oh, I, I got to personally oversee the the husbandry of it my was slaves. not simply mean bosses. Yeah. It wasn't simply that they were worked hard. It, it, was, it was horrific. They were, they were cattle, but on the other side, there's also some fantasy to it. And that's int- like, for example, the Underground Railroad is literally an underground railroad. Oh, it is a train that is underground. <laughs> oh, interesting. And that's fun and interesting and unique and whatnot. But at the same time, when you take something that is so historically important and you toss a bit of fantasy in there like that, it's a risk. It is. And I feel like it almost opens up a chance for people to say, this is fantasy. Therefore, this stuff over here about slavery oh, must also yeah, be. Yeah, okay. This this is probably exaggerated. How much, how That's probably much of extreme. this is fantasy? Yeah. And uh. that, that, that worries me a little bit. It was my problem, my biggest problem with The Greatest Showman. Oh, okay. The Greatest Showman, they've taken a real historical character who is a monster. He was a monstrous man. Yes. And, a bad person. And turned him into this like nice guy that's just trying to help out the, yeah i the see you as, as good people we're yeah. gonna fulfill our dreams like literally the opposite yeah. of of what who he was right and so it's not as bad as greatest showman okay. in that way but it does have that thought of you can take something historically important or historically notable and think of it as pretend or think of it as yeah. different and yeah. that's a little bit tough but all that to say it's very good very well produced the acting is st- Stellar. Mm. So, so good. So watch The Underground. It's really good. Uh, Sweet Tooth. I have a lot. I'll stop here in a second. Then I'll come <laughs> You've back. You've got a whole lot of shows. Sweet Tooth. Uh, did you watch Sweet Tooth at all? Or do you know of I, Sweet Tooth? I know it's a comic, another comic series. Yeah, comic and I know it's got the kid with the antlers. It is adorable. I think it's an image comic and series. And wonderful. And the, the show was great. It was not as like exciting and grandiose as I was kind of hoping. It was not. I will say it was not as good as I hoped. That is my fault. I expected it to be incredible. Sure. But I will say that I gave it like a seven and a half and eight when I expected it to be a 10. So it was a little bit less than I had hoped, but. Oh, vertigo. Oh. Uh, yeah. And, but the story that's being told is really good. It's the apocalypse. There's uh, essentially a, a pandemic that is hit and is killing the world. And right as. What the a pan- fantasy. Right. <laughs> but right as the pandemic hits 
also children are being born as animal human mm. hybrids. Interesting. And so there are some people, of course, that blame the the hybrids as for the pandemic. Oh, sure. Uh, That's but how it works. Some people who realize that they have nothing to do with each other. Nobody really knows what's going on here. So what an interesting backstory for for that uh, twisted metal character. <laughs> And so that kid with the antlers eventually becomes a clown. Becomes with a, a, a terrifying yeah, ice cream yeah, man. Yeah. Well, there's a billion more movies I could talk about, but I think it's time to move on. To the nerdy gritty. To the nerdy gritty. I deleted so many things off of my list. I'm like, I don't need to talk about this. I don't yep. need to talk about we this. Gotta, we got to be done. We got to move. We're over an hour. <laughs> more we're, than that. Far more than that. An hour and six minutes is what yep. we're at now. So, yep. oh man. Okay, let's go to the nerdy gritty. Yeah, absolutely. Hey guys, before we hit the Nerdy Gritty though, we want to let you know that you are listening to an, an, ed- an edited version of the Nerdy Gritty. Uh, it's still going to be a long episode. It's going to be a long one, but we the, the opening was over an hour. We talked about the things that we've been up to for probably half an hour, 45 minutes even. Yeah. Because we've been up to so much because it's been so long since we've been able to podcast. If you want to hear that stuff, please head over to our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash Fox and become a tier two or higher patron and you'll get access to the director's cut of the Nerdy Gritty. It's an unedited version of what we do. You get to hear all the curse words we say. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> like but. But. And poop. <laughs> no, it's unedited as in it's the full length of time. It's We talked for so long. Uh, you know, if you're a casual listener, we appreciate you listening. We appreciate your support. But if you want to take that next step, we appreciate your support financially as well. If you can do that. If not... When you tell your friends about it, when you let them know everything that we're talking about, when you say, hey, I love movies and musicals, and these guys actually talked about movie musicals, our topic today. Yeah. We really appreciate you telling your friends, so please get the word out there. If you can, go help us out on Patreon. All that being said, let's get down for the first time in months. In months. Let's get down to the nerdy gritty. Movie musicals have been fairly popular in the last I mean, they're, they're getting more and more popular. Yeah. I think they're becoming more and more common and getting wider audiences. And most recently, In the Heights uh, was released in theaters as well as on HBO Max. And it is uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda's first uh, musical, as far as I know. Came out yes. 20 years ago at this point. Well, his first, like, on stage music. I'm sure, sure he's written you know, things that never I'm sure saw, he's got whatever, plenty of stuff. Yeah. Yes, but... <laughs> In the Heights, it's a, a story about uh, Washington Heights, a neighborhood in New York, and about the dreams of the people living there. And It's about a lot of stuff. Yep. Uh, and it was wonderful, in my opinion. I, oh I really enjoyed watching it. The music is great. Yes. Uh, we're not here to talk specifically about that, um, but that is kind of what is spurring this conversation about musicals, stage musicals that are adapted and put on, uh, you know, made into movies. And not just... Th- there is a difference between, like... Last year, when Lynn Manuel Miranda's even more famous Hamilton, Hamilton was recorded, and you could watch it on HBO Max, but right. it was still the stage musical. Uh, there is a difference there. We're talking about Disney specifically Plus. Watch yes, on Disney Plus. Disney Plus on H. Uh, we're talking about um, movie musical adaptations, right? Where you're not just recording. Anyway, you get it. You get what I'm saying. Dear Evan well, Hansen's coming out soon. Sure, Dear Evan Hansen. Uh, Cats came out like yeah. a year and a half ago. Is wonderful. <laughs> uh, now there's another one that's on its way too that I can't remember. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah. What we want to talk about today is what makes a quality adaptation of a stage musical. Because folks, there are some stinkers out there. Yes. Uh, Cats. It's terrible. <laughs> it was bafflingly bad. But when we going to talk about that, uh, we're going to come at it from kind of two different perspectives here. Yeah. Uh, Des, you are an avid musical watcher. Yeah. As in stage stage yeah. productions. I have been to dozens of st- onstage musicals. Yes. I've been... I've seen Rent on Broadway. Yeah, on yeah. the actual Broadway. Yeah, in New York. Like, right. I, I am a big fan of musicals. I've seen one... I've seen a Broadway play that was not a musical. In fact, I was telling you before, aside from like high school productions that my friends were in, I've never seen an, a, 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 a stage uh, musical right. before. Uh, well, I guess I was in one. Uh, 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 what was what's the one with the three ghosts and Christmas Christmas Carol? That one. <laughs> I can't remember. That's I was in musical, one of those when I was. But... In, that's true. Oh, well, never mind. Uh, <laughs> yep. See, trying to come up with something. 
So I'm going to be coming at it from more of a cinephile right. and what I think makes a good movie version of a musical. And that's kind of what we want to talk about today because there are there, Dear Evan Hansen is coming out soon. Oh, that There's could be some, my all-time favorite musical. To me, a surprise, but also I understand we'll talk about it a little bit. Hamilton probably won't ever get an nope. actual movie version. I'm calling Lin-Manuel it right Miranda now. has talked about it himself with some of the issues he would have. Uh, so what, what we just want to talk about, like, what makes it good? How do how do how do you judge a good movie adaptation of a musical? For me, it immediately has to start with story, and that's why I think that Hamilton will never ever get a, okay. a actual movie because Hamilton is because, incredible. I mean, who tells your story? Who lives? That's who really dies, the, that's really the question. Hamilton is wonderful. It's incredible. It's lauded in so many ways, but I would say a solid fifty percent of it is a narration of history. It's yes. people singing. This is what happens. Yes, it is a sung through musical. Yes. Where basically every word is sung. And for the most part, it is, it's like uh, George Washington saying, boom, goes to the cannons, what's the blood in the spray, bloom, sure. boom, goes to the cannons, we're abandoning Kipps Bay. And it's him saying like, this is what happened in history. There was cannon fire. We didn't have cannons. They did. So we had to retreat from Kipps Bay. Right. And it's just a narration of history. This is yeah. not like looking into people's lives yeah. and talking about their feelings and what's going on with them. And it's really hard to adapt that onto screen. And so all that to say, not why Hamilton won't get it, but story has to be yeah. the key part here. So typically, if you like a, a song in a musical doesn't actually give you any exposition or very little. Right. It's usually about portraying an emotion that somebody is feeling in a big way or, you know, getting a, maybe it has a story point as the thing, but it doesn't like progress right. the story. It, it, it takes, it, it takes yeah. a picture of that moment. That story moment and often. brings it, gives it a, a big, like you right. should be paying attention to what is being said right here. Cause it's important. And so if you were to try and make a movie of that, you would have to fast forward through so many there, like, parts be, of there, You'd have to cut out a lot of info yeah. or turn it into something very different. Very different. That wouldn't be a sing-through. Like, that's my, like, if they were to do a Hamilton screen adaptation, it should be a more traditional musical that's like a six-episode series rather than it would be very difficult to, to, yeah. Well, I think what they did with Disney plus, Disney plus is perfect. I think yeah. that's oh, the yeah. best great. version of, of bringing that to movies as uh, possible, but this isn't about Hamilton. This is about what makes a good movie. Right. Musical. That's an, a big example for right. that. It's a good example. And the ability to, to focus on story and say, let's take this beautiful story about people and, yes. and, and th- their, their story and bring it to screen because that's what movies are about. Movies are about story and people and moments and things like that. And musicals carry that over really, really well. Yeah. The problem with that is like the opposite problem you have right there is Cats. Cats famously doesn't really have a plot to it. No. It's basically a bunch of abandoned like feral cats arguing about who gets to die like literally like the cats is a musical written by cats they are That's really what it is. <laughs> Here, here's a term they're jellical cats at the jellical ball what does that mean nobody knows <laughs> andrew lloyd, lloyd Webber, weber doesn't matter he no. might know who cares it like that's like to me the number one reason why the the big screen adaptation that came out a year and a half ago failed it's there's nothing to like latch on to as to what is what is happening? What's going to happen? I, I understand that, uh, you know, uh, Idris Elba, whatever his name is, McCavity, is the bad guy. But what's he trying to do? Like, what's his goal here? Why does he have magic powers? Why does nobody else have magic powers? It's basically just them each getting a spotlight. And I, I have a feeling that watching the musical on stage is more about watching the incredible, like, choreography. Right. And about the amazing singing <laughs> that's going on jennifer hudson has an incredible voice and was great to listen to yeah but as for a movie you need to have like you need to know where it's going or at least want to like the drama comes from rooting for something or right. wanting to see what happens next and if you don't have that then your movie sucks <laughs> <laughs> or it's some weird experimental film and it shouldn't be some big state you know so you need to have story and it needs to be able to 
be portrayed in a in a in a way that is digestible and understandable. So Hamilton and Cats to me are kind of on the opposite ends of that. Yeah, I would agree. None or too much to be faithfully adapted. Right. Yeah. And Cats also had the problem, and this would be another thing is like if you were to, I mean, irony to this, Lion King. Lion King is a Tony Award winning musical yes. as well. Yes. It's incredible. But if you were to try to bring that to film, it would be different because part of what makes it so incredible and part of what made cats so incredible was the costuming. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to put that in a film and then just cover it with CG, it right. removes this massive element of what's yes. going on in this musical. And so you can't just say, and this is going to be my next point. You can't just take popular musical and put it onto screen. Right. It has to be something that will translate. And that, that was a problem with cats is there's a huge part of cats that doesn't translate into film because the costuming is beautiful yeah in cats. it's it's amazing but then if you just cover it in cg it just takes that element away yeah it's it it, it there i mean like a lot of different types of art like a movie a stage a musical is a combination of many different skills writing and singing and costuming and like set design and like uh, the art de direction the lighting there's yeah. so many different elements and you have to be able to adapt all those in a faithful way to a movie and that can be done it's been done lots of times right it didn't work in cats nope. and it should be taken <laughs> as a uh 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 a, a warning yeah and i think that also falls in line with one of my favorite movie musicals uh uh mamma mia yeah i love mamma mia mostly because i love abba yes but the story the of mamma is mia is dumb <laughs> and a lot of the moments are really stupid and cheesy and corny and that's kind of a selling point for those because they are supposed to be joyful yeah but it's why i think mamma mia 2 hot take here hot take incoming i think mamma mia 2 is a better musical a better movie oh than man hot, than uh because simply because it was written to be a movie Oh. It was like Mamma Mia was a musical adapted to the right. screen. Had wonderful moments. I mean, like Amanda Seafood or whatever her name is. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, uh, Donna, uh, Meryl Streep. Yeah. X, I mean, everybody in that. Wonderful. I mean, you got uh, uh, James Bond in there who's Pierce, Pierce Brosnan. Brosnan who can't sing. Not great. But oh. anyway, uh, but it, like lots of wonderful elements. But it tried to faithfully adapt this very corny story. That didn't translate as well. And Mamma Mia 2 was written to be a movie. And so it didn't have to it didn't have to be hamstrung by some of the things people were expecting from the first one. And so I think it came off a lot better as far as like plotting and yeah, and, and and, and uh, yeah. And so I whenever I go back and listen to the, the the soundtracks, I will generally listen to the second one way more often. Uh so I think that, yeah, I think that's, you have to take in mind everything that a stage musical has. And if you can't really make it all work, then something's going to feel off. And to me, I think it's the idea of, you know, the uncanny valley. Yeah. When a character looks realistic, but you know, something's off. I think that can apply to musicals themselves when they're made into a movie. Really good where example. You're just like this. I'm willing to accept a lot of this, but there's just something about it. That is not really working for me. And that can just permeate an entire movie. Well, and the songs in it have to agree with that. So here's uh, my two examples of the music itself has to be important too. I'm going to take um, uh, Rock of Ages okay. and Trolls, the, the first Trolls movie. Sure. The first Trolls movie was a glorified music video. It was taking all of these songs, and the songs didn't really have anything to do it's with the... jukebox the, musical. Yeah, yeah. With, with the... well. Not just the jukebox musical, as the songs themselves didn't lend to the plot at all. Oh, they, they minorly had something kind of to do with it. And if you don't the, know, a jukebox musical is a term for a musical that uses pre like songs yeah. that are already existent and not for that plot. Because both of these, like Rock of Ages and Trolls, are both Mama jukebox Mia. musicals. It's all Mama, ABBA music yeah. across the universe. Is all Beatles music. It's not written for the movie. Moulin so Rouge. in in Trolls. It doesn't really lend to the film itself, the the musical part of it doesn't lend to the self. Where on the flip side, Rock of Ages is a jukebox musical, as you were saying, of sure. all, all classic a lot of 80, rock, eighties music, yeah. yeah. And 
it is in they take these songs and they distill the message of these songs <laughs> and then they put them in these incredible situations like two guys coming out to each other that they're in love with each other <laughs> right. singing i can't fight this feeling anymore there you go. and it's just so wonderful and great they somehow and make the, tom cruise watchable yeah well tom cruise can sing in I don't something know in that. something that's not mission impossible yeah. <laughs> but uh I mean, on that note, I'll get to that in a second, but all this to say the music has to be important to it in some way. You can't just put catchy tunes in a good movie and call it a movie musical. The sure. music yeah. has to be important to the yeah, music. which I think I have not seen it. I've watched a lot of critiques. I've seen some of the videos of the songs. I think that's also one of the major problems with uh, The Greatest Showman. Right. Is that a lot of the songs are kind of just generic, like, follow your dreams music, which can be fine, but... It's not really dur- – like, if you put it in another musical, it could work just as well, and I think that's a problem, especially if it's original music. There are there – are, and it's really funny because in – let's talk about uh, Greatest Showman for a little bit. You can put the songs in two categories almost entirely separate. There are the songs like that that you're saying, like um, the, the the intro show, the, the This is the Greatest Show – and then there's the one that the uh, the sideshow people sing that I can't remember the name of because it's so generic and bland. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but on the flip side, there are songs like The Other Side where it's uh, Barnum trying to convince uh, Zac Efron to join him. And it's... it's uh, You're a freak. You're too good looking. <laughs> It's staccatoed and the choreography is great and it's it like fast rhythmically and the choreography of that scene is just glorious and that song is so good mm. in so many different ways and it helps carry the plot forward and there's so much that goes on with it but then on the flip side there's like you're saying believe in yourself and that's okay it doesn't really lend to the plot yeah it doesn't I mean move it the might story be it might be relevant. Way, but- but it doesn't if it doesn't like mention a character or like specifically it like that can just feel like okay somebody wrote this and this then is they me. put that's it, the name of the song this sure and me. then they put it in this musical rather yeah. than somebody sat down and wrote this you know yeah I think another thing I, so I've long wondered why uh uh musical and animation were lumped into the same category of like awards like this is your uh, animated or musical film will be, right will be the winner or whatever. Uh, be the same category as even at the Oscars. But I, I've been thinking about it, and I think a big element of it is a heightened reality. Mm. If you are watching an animated movie, you can get, or if you're ri- making one, you can get away with a lot more than you can with like physics, right. with character dimensions, and with character movement than you can with actual people. Um, it's, it, I think, a, a reason why like something like an animated version of The Dark Knight uh, Returns is can be wonderful and something that is heavily influenced by it like uh uh batman versus superman dawn of justice won't because they these are larger than life characters and when you make it animated you kind of as the audience can accept more that doesn't feel right. real but it's animated so it's not real yeah and i think that's the same with a movie musical and to me, this is uh, obviously Les Mis, the big, the most recent stage or mu- movie version of it, is really good in a yes. lot of ways. Really great. Hugh Jackman, I think, is wonderful in it. I remember, uh, you know, Look Down, I think is the name of the song. But that the like moment one, just yeah. like sticks with me a lot. Uh, but also, I think, and this is, this is my <laughs> opinion of this specific movie, is that... <sighs> If you're gonna say it, it's bad, we're gonna fight. I don't right think it now. was bad. I think <laughs> something. I maybe it has falls in line with the Uncanny Valley hmm. a little bit. Of there was a lot of heavy stuff going on in this. Yeah. And when you get to the, I'm specifically talking about who who's uh what's his name Sasha Baron Cohen's character. Uh, Mr. Tenardier. Sure, those guys. The those you know uh the Tenardiers, Sasha Baron Cohen and and uh, uh, and yes wife yes um tim burton's wife <laughs> you just i didn't said say wife. i didn't say tim burton's wife i just said his, oh his wife i meant oh, the character's wife. wife yes it's gonna drive me nuts i can't remember her name but yeah go ahead. sure that moment felt so weird to me because the movie is a very heavy a lot of dark material going his dark materials are going on in there <laughs> and when you get to this like goofy kind of like moment it felt weird and it felt like out of place and it uh it felt like it wanted me to believe in this heightened reality of these goofy, like, in-owners who are also jerks. But, like, 
and then combining that with this woman prostituting herself and this slave being shown grace by a priest and you know all these moments and i don't think it super worked a hundred percent i don't think the movie was a hundred percent great and i think a lot of that was there is a heightened reality to musicals while you're watching this you have to accept that these characters are not actually singing in the movie yeah. <laughs> a movie um, the, a kind of a definition of a musical is that the the music happening is not actually happening it's why something like pitch perfect is not a musical yeah they're not because the characters musicals. are singing in real life in that they're not just getting across an emotion or a or a plot point in a bombastic way yeah and so I think there, uh, in a good movie, you have to portray it in a way that you understand there is a heightened reality here. That what is happening is not actually happening. It's entirely symbolic, or at least mostly symbolic. It can still talk about an actual plot point. But uh, I don't know. There, there's just a heightened reality that has to be accepted. And sometimes that doesn't really work. And for, I'm sure there's a better version. Maybe Rent would be a better version, the most recent mo adaptation of that. Because that was rough. There were a, lot, a few rough moments where, like, yeah, characters were like... A lot of like, rough moments. Yeah. Well, I mean, in, like, uh, characters are like, you're not living in the moment, man. And what they're doing is, like, trying to convince them to do drugs. And you're like, yes. this is weird. And I feel like it works better as a stage production rather than how that movie portrayed it. And I don't know. It's 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 one of those things where... I know it when I see it <laughs> yeah. kind of thing. I understand what you're saying. And I think that there has to be a, a holistic understanding of the music as well, you know, cause you're talking about rents and you're, you're right. She's coming in. Yes. Uh, Mimi is coming into Roger and saying in this song, Hey, let's do Coke. Yeah. And, and, yeah, I and forget the actual line have in the sex. song. Yeah. Like, that's what yeah, it is. Like let, let's, let's do these things. And he, as well as, aids in the mix well he they don't know that each other has okay, aids okay he knows he has gotcha. aids and so he's like no <laughs> i don't want to do no but really the message of that song and the message of the entire musical is we have to live in the moment because we're both dying mm. we both have terminal illnesses and so we have to live in the moment and it didn't it didn't come off super no well. not it kinda, in the movie it, it wasn't super well <laughs> translated so uh, th that is something that also needs to be done is you have to find a way to dis to distill the message of the film yes. or of the musical and make sure that you still communicate that in film. Right. You want to get the tone and the theme and yeah, like there's a, there's a, there's an element that's non-physical right. <laughs> that you I, need to portray in a, in a faithful way. I will actually disagree with you on the Les Mis one. Okay. The, the whole, that's fair. the whole, yeah. <laughs> it's a hot take. idea of that uh, master of the house song yeah, is, I couldn't remember. Yeah. That. Is that the refrain. it's a dark comedy? It's That's it's fair. everybody laughing and joking about the fact that he is swindling everybody yeah, in this yeah, yeah, place, yeah, yeah. and and also a terrible caretaker of yeah. Uh, they're they're, they're literally cheering and singing along to this bar song about what a horrible human being these people fair are. Fair point. Fair point. And and it really just lends to this whole. This is what is accepted in France at this mm -hmm. time. Yeah. This is what people are like, and it's just communicating that message. And I think again, it's distilling that message of things are terrible right now and we're trying to make the best of it that Les Mis has and brings it over. And I think they did a great job of it in the film, sure, but sure. yeah. Uh, but I, what I will say is we were talking about Helena Bonham Carter, Sasha Baron Cohen, Tom Cruise. You got it. You looked it up. Yeah. Yeah. Helena Bonham Carter. I, I did. I had to look in it a million up things. Uh, but you have to find people who can do both sing and act on screen. Yes. Pierce Brosnan did not deliver that. He He's can't better sing. in the second one because he doesn't <laughs> sing as much. But you can he can act on screen, or there are times when there are people who can sing great, but they're not great screen actors. Like they don't really bring Russell Crowe is a an example of the first one also in Lamez. Right, right. And there's this uh there's you have to find people who can do both. That's why I think In the Heights was so great. Wonderfully cast. Yes, but the uh, the main character was John Lawrence slash Philip Hamilton in Hamilton. He was in sure. Hamilton. Yeah, yeah. Right. There was a lot of crossover too, uh, aside from the old uh, Lin Manuel Miranda. Yeah, Lin Manuel and, and uh, Christopher Jackson. Washington was. <laughs> I was the, the Paleta man. That's a Tucson thing. Nah, he was the, the Piragua. Uh, the Piragua. Piraguero. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and by the way, Mr. Frosty or whatever his right. name was, that's Christopher Washington. Jackson was Washington. Yeah, the rival. Yeah. I love it. It was well, wonderful. Not rival, but anyway. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, all this to say, you got to find people who can do both, and give a chance to the Broadway stars. By the way, uh, like in Rent, 
they cast the entire original cast other than two people. Oh, really? And the only reason that the, those two people did not get it, it was Mimi is one. And that's because she's supposed to be a few years younger than everybody else. And if they recast her, it'd be she, weird. She'd be now in her 20, late 20s. <laughs> Dear Evan Hansen. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Oh, that's something I want to bring up. Yes. <laughs> oh, that or on the flip cost. side, Joanne is supposed to be a few years older than everybody else in the mm. musical. And if they recast her, she would be in her forties at that point. She'd gotcha. be too old. So yeah. those are the only two people that they recast. Other than that, it was the entire original Broadway cast and they crushed it. They freaking crushed it. And the majority of these actors moved on to do more afterward, sure. particularly Adina Menzel, who is ginormous now. <laughs> I think I've heard of her. Yeah. Maybe, maybe once or twice. Yeah, I think she like she liked Taylor, Taylor Swift. Like, you know, people like her, but if you're trying to find people who can, who, who can sing and act really well, Probably the Broadway Broadway stars who sing and act. Through the I'm whole going thing. to disagree with you. Okay, as somebody who is more about the movie than the musical. Ah, yeah, and that is, I I can't watch the Dear Evan Hansen trailer without laughing. <laughs> he's about, actually not. He's 27. He's not that old. He looks. I mean, I he understand. looks 40. It doesn't matter how old he looks. <laughs> he instantly is not high schooler. No, he he's is. Not. He could look. He could be 21. And look like not high schooler. And he, he looks like the undercover cop. Like, has <laughs> <laughs> this never been kissed too? Or, uh, no, yeah. I Here's the thing. I, I, I agree. I understand. Like, if you're looking for people who know the material intimately, who ever, you know, performed these songs and whatever, um, hundreds of thousands of times, then yeah, the original Broadway cast, they're going to know their stuff. Your, your rehearsal is going to be a lot easier and you're going to be able to translate that like they know the music, so translating it, the different choreography that shows up, or like the different sets or whatever, that's cool. Sure, it's going to be easier. But if I'm just coming, I've never listened to or watched Dear Evan Hansen the musical, and then I watch a preview for this movie called Dear Evan Hansen <laughs> about this high schooler who looks like he's 35, and I'm just like, is this a joke? It looks like a, it looks like a fake trailer or something. It looks like Steve Buscemi in that one yes, episode of Thirty Rock. Yeah, what do you, how you do, fellow kids? Like, <laughs> Hello, fellow kids. Right, and he's got look, a music under, band on he, his shirt. Yeah, and you told me, oh, he's the original Evan Hansen. I'm like, oh, okay, that really doesn't matter to me. Right, watching a movie, I could, I, I probably wouldn't have known until I like looked at trivia after I watched the movie, if you hadn't told me Mm -hmm. and it would just feel weird the entire time until I got used to it three quarters of the way in or something. And I I wholeheartedly agree with this. And that's why Les Mis did something really cool. The, uh, the Tony award winning Jean Valjean is the priest in the movie version. They gave him a different Different role. role. And I think that Evan Hansen, uh, I mean, yeah, I told you like make him a teacher or maybe I told him faith. Like give him another role or something. I don't know what role. There, there there's are. an iconic role of the dad. Now Ben he's, Platt isn't old enough to he, be he's the right dad. In the middle. Right, but I think you could much more easily age him up than age him down. Yes. I will say that makeup wise, Very that is so. easier. Yes. yes. So uh, because let me tell you, the aging him down didn't work, guys. <laughs> Holy crap, it didn't work. It didn't work. But Ben Platt is this incredible vocalist so I, I understand why they wanted to give him the chance but i've seen pitch pitch perfect okay i, I saw dear evan hansen live and there was a 19 year old kid so there was the, the star was supposed to be a 21 year old guy but we got the understudy and it was a 19 year old guy oh, okay and he was incredible sure he, and so get that guy <laughs> all that to say you can find somebody who's young there are a million actors sing. out there tell ben platt hey man you're pushing 30. We we're gonna, can't push you we're off gonna for an 18-year-old anymore. Yeah, you're a decade out of this. Yeah. So and Yeah, I think that's a, an element of like, this is something different. Yeah. And I feel like it was driven by fan desire. Like the, the fandom wanted Ben Platt because he's the original, but it's not going to work, you know, mm. or it, it'll work fine. He'll be great. But there's just going to be that thing that's in the back of my mind the whole time. It's just like, I'm not buying it, you know? <laughs> So there's one last thing I want to talk about. I also have one last thing. You okay. Go ahead. Uh, I love uh, the sequence in In the Heights when it's, um I can't remember their names, Bobby and Love Interest. Benny and Nina? I, I, Benny, not Ben. Yeah, not. Uh, sorry. I don't want to reduce her to Love Interest. There is no character that can be reduced to right. one single thing. It's wonderful. Benny and Nina? Yes, Benny and Nina. And they're dancing on the side of the building. Yeah. Wonderful. That was and awesome. cannot happen in a stage yep. ad- adaptation. And I think movies should take advantage of the 
ability to do something beyond to like to me that portrayed an emotion that was beyond what is like it it, it enhanced the emotions very in the much song. So. wholeheartedly agree yeah and that, so that they're walking on clouds together. yeah literally very literally doing so. this like you know if picturing this future and you know all these things that that is maybe a little over dramatic and a little unrealistic and but when you're musical that's fine and so is the sequence yes. and it like under underscores what exactly is being said. And I want musicals to do that more Yeah. instead of like, it doesn't need to be a hundred percent faithful to what happens in the thing. You have an opportunity to enhance. I, and I, I think that's a good idea to do. I'll back that up with the same movie, the pool scene, uh, yeah. the, the 96,000 yeah. just huge, like everybody, uh, uh synchronized swimming hundreds you know, of, of people yeah. yeah same with the opening uh, scene in the streets yes they're all singing together and dancing together so cool man yeah. so much fun wonderful couldn't do that can't do that on, on stage. stage you need you gotta take advantage <laughs> literally of that. don't have the space okay my last one is gonna yes. be the hot take oh here we go it's okay to cut songs this is something I thought about. I forgot about it. But I'm glad you brought it up. It's okay to cut songs. And I, that's yes. really hard, especially because in the Rent musical, some of the songs that were cut were my favorite sure. songs. But there's also one song in Rent called Contact that, in my opinion, is the worst song, the most awkward song, and lends nothing to the should musical at all. Like It should be cut from the musical. The entire thing. Yeah. yeah. Not, and but that was also left out. And it worked way better or i think a better example of this was phantom of the opera the movie okay they cut a decent amount of songs or shortened some of the other songs and they made like a really palatable hour and 45 minute yeah. movie and it was great it was really well gerard butler is not the greatest vocalist in the world but he did a passable job as the phantom sure and the movie was fantastic for it in fact i went and saw phantom of the opera in vegas after that and they did the movie version it was everything really? was cut down it was a one act there was no intermission hour and a half hour and 45 minutes but it was vegas style like pyrotechnics okay that lights makes sense. like it's not everything the yeah. broadway yeah exactly it doesn't and have that yeah. it was cool i prefer i i've seen phantom of the opera twice on stage normally this is my third time watching it in broad or, or not in broadway in uh vegas and it was different but it was cool and it was fun and it's okay to do that for the movie because when you're going to a movie you're expecting a movie when you're walking yes. into a musical theater you're expecting a musical theater and you're okay to sit there for three hours with an intermission watching a musical yes but when you're walking to a movie you know what some less of that unless you are an incredible screenwriter yeah there there is a pretty strong time limit to any movie which is about two hours maybe 215 if you're really good but at a certain point they're too long yep. it just becomes too much and you start to lose interest and that is a problem yeah and so yeah i 100 percent agree uh that pacing needs to be addressed mm -hmm. and there is a different mindset that you should have going into a movie than you are into a musical including if you're a big fan of the musical like that's just how I know Sweeney Todd cut a few songs out yeah. for the for the movie. I'm sure most do, and I I think Sweeney Todd is great. Yeah, and I would love to see an extended cut. That'd be fine. And I I think that'd be so fun. Like uh, the Rent album for the movie. Yeah, has the cut songs well, there on you go. it. That's wonderful. Yeah, and so you can listen to the songs, yeah. which it's the exact same thing as the Broadway recording. Sure, because it's the same performance, sure. but uh, it, it's really fun to be able to ha to hear those songs but you don't have to make people who aren't there to sit for, through a three-hour right, musical right. do that so feel mama mia does the same thing i think yeah yeah well that's all i got well, that's all i got it's a lot more than i thought i'd have to talk yeah, about no kidding. Movie I, well, musicals I to i've told you this a lot when you brought up this idea i'm like i don't know how many other people will be interested but i have a lot to say we talk about, about this. niche stuff all the time yeah my point though is that i had so much to yeah, say yeah, about. Yeah, 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 i've yeah. been thinking about this for a while <laughs> and also thinking about the fact another hot take hamilton's popularity i'd say a solid 20 percent of it comes from the fact that a lot of the songs are earworms are very poppy earworms Ooh. Not it's not a knock against it i'm not saying it's okay bad if we're still for talking about this lin-manuel miranda's lyric writing skill is incredible. incredible this guy every every chorus is different like he doesn't rely on like i think maybe his melodies are earworms Mm. And he has some great phrases that come back over and over yeah, again. Yeah, that is very much like his choruses, but repeat in ha in Hamilton a lot. Sometimes, sure, but he like in in the Heights, in the, is Heights the same. Is very different. The opening scene, every chorus is different. 
in the heights we something 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 right. and then it just changes every time it's not trying to like in the heights is the memorable little phrase but anyway that's i just all. know that my kids walk around saying "Ooh, i do i do i do i do because they love because they love abba i do i do i do i do so and they don't know no different. that's hamilton boy you got oh, me helpless gotcha and there's just there's a lot of things in Hamilton that are just sure. get stuck in your head. But anyway, Wanna, all sure. that's the same. Uh, thank you guys for listening. <laughs> we really appreciate all of your support. We want to say a big thank you. And sorry, we haven't featured your song in a while, guys. To Granger for use of our theme song, All My Friends Have Wi-Fi. And so do some of my neighbors off of the album, Dear Sam. Love you. We love you guys. Thank you so much for your support. Yeah, we uh, still have our YouTube channel. That thing we've yeah. been continuing to uh, play games together and, and on our own. And so right now we're our playthrough of uh, Resident, uh, Evil, Resident Evil Village. Village is up, as well as my playthrough of Ratchet and Clank is is halfway. Maybe I haven't actually finished it yet. As soon as I can, I, it's been crazy busy for me because I'm moving in a new house mm -hmm. and I've literally my job has been building furniture. Sure, <laughs> sure. But as soon as I can, I'm going to be putting up uh, the House of Da Vinci. Followed by the room old sins. Yeah, we've got. We, I mean, as always, we've got a lot of content up there. Yeah, we played a lot of games together. We're playing a few things right now. We just played uh, uh, Piku Niku, which was very short. We didn't expect that. We finished it in about an hour. And then uh, we're playing uh, Minute right now, which has been very interesting so far. Yeah, so I we like got a lot of a lot. stuff on, on on the way too. So yeah, go check out our YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching or listening, not watching. Thanks again for listening, guys. And always remember that saved games save lives. Bye. My voice is on.